everyone, Mr. Steve from Pack 1421, and we are still talking Pinewood Derby. In this video, which is our final video of this series, we're going to talk about some advanced alignment techniques, specifically rail riding and lifting one wheel. These techniques will be faster than a car that simply goes straight, and we're going to explain why that is to you. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is rail riding? Let's take a look at some pictures and I can show you what, what we're talking about here. So this is a picture of a car sitting in the middle lane of our track. And I've used this particular car for a reason. This is actually an outlaw car. And the reason why I've used an outlaw car here is because unlike in the scout class, in the outlaw class, we're allowed to bend the axles. So this car gives us a much more exaggerated look at what a rail rider does. So the first thing to note is, that, is the rails of this track. Track. There's one inside of each wheel, and these rails are what guides the car down the track. So the second thing you'll notice is that the left front wheel of this car, the axle is bent and the wheel is lifted up off the track. The reason why we do this is because it creates less friction. There's one less wheel making contact with the track, and that's going to make the car faster. Now, this is only true if that wheel doesn't make contact with the rail that's on the inside of it. So in a perfect world, since we've gotten our car to run straight, this should not be an issue. However, in reality, it is. And the reason for that is, is that our track is 40 feet long. And while we do everything we can to make sure that track is as level as it can be, it will never be perfect. Even if the track is perfectly level for the entire 40 foot run, there's no guarantee that when the car is set up on the starting pin, that that wheel isn't set up against that rail. And if it is, it defeats the whole purpose of raising it in the first place. So this is why we do what's called rail riding. What we do is we align the car in such a way so that it just gently turns away from that dominant wheel. So that dominant wheel rides right up against the rail, just gently enough, not creating a lot more friction, but creating less friction than it would if that other wheel was riding up against the rail. So all of this seems pretty simple. All we have to do is bend one wheel up in the air, get the car to turn away from the dominant wheel, and we've got ourselves a rail rider. But it's not quite that simple. There's more to it than that. It's very difficult to see with this car, and this is the, this is the car that's in the, the pictures that I just showed you. The, the rear of this car is a little bit wider than the front of this car. This is the way this car was built. Again, this is an outlaw car. The reason for that is as this wheel is riding up against the rail, these wheels are nowhere close to the rail. So building a rail rider has to be baked into the initial design of the car. Now, the other thing that we do with a rail rider car is we bend all the axles to a, to a particular degree. The reason for this is so that the wheels ride up against the axle heads and don't touch the body at all. This not only helps us keep the rear wheels off the rails, but it also lets us set the car up for a particular alignment very predictably. So by having the, the front axles bent, if they're bent towards the back, the car is going to steer to one direction. If they're bent towards the front, the car is going to steer towards the other direction. So why is this important? In the Scout class, our rules specifically dictate what we can and cannot do to the axles. And one of those things that we cannot do is to bend them. And that's why it makes it very difficult to set up a rail riding car in the Scout class. Having said that, it can be done. This particular car is a Scout class car. It is set up as a rail rider. We showed you in our last video how it actually has a dominant left front wheel, and this wheel doesn't actually touch the ground. Uh, it's also got a bias to turn away from that dominant wheel. The problem is you can't do a lot of the tricks to make a rail rider work in a Scout class car. You can't bend the axles. You can't taper the axle heads to reduce even more friction. All those things are illegal in the Scout class. So if you're going to make a rail rider out of a Scout class car, you have to pay a lot of attention to details, not only when you're prepping the wheels and axles, but when you're installing those wheels and axles and aligning that car. Again, the first step is to get that car to go straight. Once you can get it going dead straight, then you can start skewing it away from that dominant wheel. So I've zoomed in a little bit here so you can see two different approaches to lifting one wheel off the track. So in this car, what we ended up doing was we used a Dremel tool and a, and a cutting wheel to just deepen this groove a little bit. So when we installed this axle straight in, it was a little bit higher than this axle, which is how we got this wheel off the ground. In this car, we took a different approach. What we actually did was we installed the axle at an angle pointing down. So the axle is not actually straight in the body. You can see right here the 
the end of the axle is kind of poking out because the axle is not straight. So it's not bent, but it's not in the car straight, which is what got this wheel lifted up off the ground. So hopefully this video has given you some insight into what makes a rail riding car and why a rail rider can be faster than a car that just goes straight, as well as some of the reasons why it's more difficult to do a rail rider in a scout class car than it is in something like an outlaw car. Also, hopefully, this entire video series has helped you gain an understanding of what makes a Pinewood Derby car go fast and how to build some of that speed into your car. So as we said at the outset of this video series, the Pinewood Derby, while it is about the race, it is much more about spending time with your child, letting his or her imagination create the car, and just having fun while doing it. So since this is the last video of our series, I'm going to say thanks for watching. I'm going to go build some cars with my kids. I'll see you at the track. She's my little dust girl. You don't know.